This session is technology-based uh, delivery. And uh, for this session, we uh, want to come to a, a critical question and get you to think of it in two ways, to think of it in the positive aspect and in the negative aspect. I know uh, it's so easy when we come together uh, just to think in the negative. The things that we miss, the things that we don't have, the things that we wish we had, the things that we need. That's fine if we get to those things, but I'd like you to also think about the positive things because the very positive things that you've experienced may be just the answer that somebody else needs and needs to hear. And so in part of the discussion, we'd like to make sure you get to that. The uh, critical question for the day that we're going to try and answer is this. What obstacles in pastoral training can technology-based delivery overcome. In other words, technology should be a help to us. It ought to be something that comes alongside and, and meets something. What are the obstacles that technology can come in and overcome? So in the positive, think of those things in your own ministry that technology has helped, and as we break out, uh, bring those up. It might be just the answer that somebody else says, you know what, I've had that same obstacle. I didn't know that existed your sharing becomes the answer for them. The negative of that would be, I still have this obstacle, I have this need, and wow, somehow I, I need it overcome, and, and, and we'll ask you to submit questions and that, and our panel will try and uh, answer that, and we might just gesture down the line, and nobody wants to be at the end because they're going to get the last question. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself for just a minute, then I'm going to introduce each one. We have uh, other presenters that are here today, and then have them come and share a little bit of their ministry. I am, uh, as I already said, uh, Tim Kroll. I'm a pastor in St. Petersburg, Florida. I am here this week representing the Helios ministry. Uh, I'll just give full disclaimer. I don't work for Helios. I'm not involved in Helios, except this week I'm volunteering uh, it's Helios with Woodrow Kroll. Uh, Woodrow Kroll is the uh, Bible teacher for Back to the Bible Radio for 23 years. It's his ministry. I'm his son, and he couldn't make it here this week, and so he asked me to come and fill in. And so that's what I'm doing here. So I'll try and answer all your questions, but you might come up with questions that I just didn't get all the answers to. Helios is this. We like to say it's a Bible and Christian faith education in the palm of your hand. Uh, the first project that we've completed is uh, what we call Helios CT, Christian Theology. It's 200 sessions, audio sessions, of teaching Christian theology uh, for pastors. Pastors probably haven't had any training before. Any pastor could use it, but our niche and focus are those that haven't had it. Uh, we deliver it on two different products, uh, two different pieces of technology. The very first one uh, that we uh, developed is, uh, uh, some of you have seen the Mega Voice. This is hardware by Mega Voice. Uh, but the contents are the Helios uh, ministry contents. It's the entire Bible and those 200 sessions, all in audio, all on a solar-powered device. So those who might be in areas without electricity, without regular electricity, don't need to worry about it. They don't need to worry about electronics. Everything they need is right here. And they don't need to worry about uh, being able to read. We're aimed towards probably the vast majority of pastors who have no training, might not be fully literate and need to listen to and have a device that they could use in a rural area. The second device is we had some saying, listen, I, I have my own device. I do have electricity now and then, but I'd still like all of that training. And so we've put everything, all, all the audio onto a flash drive. And so you load it to your own equipment and listen to it there. Uh, and we've also put the notes on here so you could read those and print those. The next project we're working on, Dr. Kroll's actually already working on it, is what we call Helios GS. And that is going to be another 200 audio sessions. By the way, that's each session's 20 to 22 minutes, so it's about uh, 70 to 80 hours of training. The next project is uh, GS, that's God's story. It's going to be teaching through 500 stories of scripture to kind of give a commentary of the story of redemption. That's who Helios is. If you're interested uh, after this, uh, we're going to be talking about technology and you. If you're interested in Helios, stop by our table up there. We have a case presentation tomorrow at 1230. 
up in Sapphire, I think 204, stop by and see us there. I've got papers here to let you know that. Just going down uh, the, uh, the chairs up front here, I'm going to introduce our uh, next presenter, uh, Gary Combs. Gary is here from International Cooperating Ministries. He's also the director of the Mini Bible College, and I'm going to invite him to come up and uh, give a presentation of their ministry. Thank you, Tom. Welcome, everybody. Uh, let me start by saying how privileged we are in that someone invited us to this conference about two months ago. So uh, we're just thrilled. This is our first time being here. And our ministry is all about one thing, and that is getting the people into God's word and God's word into the people. That is the exact quote from the man who wrote our curriculum called the Mini Bible College. His name is Pastor Dick Woodward. He uh, died two years ago, but he continued this, uh, these teachings after learning under Dr. J. Vernon McGee some years ago uh, through the Bible. And he said, Dr. McGee, I'd like to use your studies. Dr. McGee said, well, why don't you write your own? After pastoring for 30 years, he lost the use of his legs and then finally his arms. So he could only move his head about as far as I'm about to, like this. As a bedfast quadriplegic for 16 years, he continued to write, teach, mentor people such as me, and also to um, engage with college students. But his teachings are very fundamentally based, and you'll find that our ministry follows the Lausanne Covenant in everything we do. So let me describe the fact that we are this nurturing component, but we are also a ministry who partners with others in local countries. We are operating with uh, 180 partners right now in 81 countries. And through those local partners is how we distribute first. But now let's talk about the technology piece. The components, though, of our, of our teachings called the Mini Bible College includes audio lessons. That's the core of the teachings. These are 215 audio lessons, approximately 30 minutes each. And it consists of four major components. The first is called the series Sermon on the Mount. These are Jesus' teachings about how the Old and New Testaments relate to one another, creating a just really good foundation for those who want to dig deeper. The next is 90 lessons of Sermon on the I'm sorry, of uh, Old Testament survey and then New Testament survey. And finally, 11 lessons on family and marriage. What does the Bible say about the role of the father and husband, the wife and mother, and the children in the family unit? So, that is the structure of the teachings. But let me say that each case, these lessons are intended for multiple use, and that's why we are here. We're just so happy to share this with you. Right now in 40 different languages, plus 10 more languages in production right now in development, we provide these teachings so that those who are just beginning believers uh, on an individual basis can go online and get everything I just said for free. It's also a resource for those in, in your congregations who are maybe just beginning or might even be more mature in their, in their learning. But uh, the pastors themselves, think of the pastors. Some have absolutely no training formally. Some have three months, some have six months, some have a year. These are pastors who you all know are still learning just as hopefully we all are. But in that case, the pastors can use this for themselves to develop their own personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and they can also share that with their lay people and elders in the congregations they are growing, and they can use it for uh, their sermons. I know I've done it, <laughs> but I've given credit every time. Uh, the fact is, that's who it's for, and that is the content. Are there any questions about that before I go too far? Okay. So... The technology piece, what are we doing? As I said, we worked through indigenous ministries, through partnerships, and began, believe it or not, on the radio years ago in just Mandarin and one of the languages in India and Spanish and Portuguese. And even back then, this is a 2002 time frame, we were working with cassettes. Anybody ever seen a cassette? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. 
Uh, so listen, in 2006 then, we began using the mega voice that Tom described just a moment ago. Ours are not the red color, ours are the black ones, but it, the content's a little different too, but uh, same device. We love the fact that it's solar powered. Think of how many villages don't have power. So this is a device you can charge eight hours, it'll play eight hours, you can drop it, you can throw it against the wall and it'll still work. So this is a wonderful tool. Then we also began developing other uh, partnerships with people who make a different product. One is called Devar. It's called Devar Partners Limited out of uh, South Africa. And another one called VGM, three letters, VGM, operating out of uh, Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. And we are using those units within Vietnam. Those are a little different because they're not really solar powered because they have power in most places but it looks like a little mini boom box. So you can picture a, a little tiny speaker on two ends with a digital display in the middle. It's a pretty cute unit. So these are uh, some of the ways. But let's talk about all of the ways because technology is changing so fast. We began with radio, as I said, on 13 different uh, languages. Um, now we're working with web-based broadcasters. Some of them you may rec recognize, some not. But listen, folks, everything I'm talking about now like Tom, we are right there in the exhibit hall, so come and visit. Or tomorrow, we're in room 201, right above here in the Sapphire area, doing the case presentation at lunchtime. But uh, some of these web-based broadcasters, both of these are called uh, part of uh, Salem Network. They're called lcto.com in Spanish, oneplace.com in English. How many of you recognize the name TWR360? Two people, great. TWR360, thank you, uh, is a web-based broadcaster. You know TWR. So this is web-based broadcast in multiple languages and all of our content is there. This is again a free resource and the strength of TWR marketing is that they are marketing themselves as a resource that anybody can come to and it's free. So I invite you to check that one out. We also invite our partners to link to us so that we can take advantage of their, their website and them take advantage of ours. In China, for example, we're working, because it's under close scrutiny still from many of the China um, RABs, the regional uh, religious boards, we end up working through a, uh, a group in Albuquerque, New Mexico, using their site to deliver Mandarin so it doesn't directly link back to ICM, because we wouldn't want that to jeopardize those in the field who are using the teachings and can be traced. They, they trace our emails too, so I, I don't know. They haven't arrested me yet, so it's okay. Uh, so the, the Facebook and the Twitter and those kinds of things, NBC is developing its own Facebook presence in addition to our ministry, ICM, International Cooperating Ministries, uh, ICM.org. Um, but Twitter and Pinterest, the, the whole ministry is on that as well. Where are we going next? Well, golly, I don't know how much time I have, Tom, so stop me. You know, us pastors, we can talk forever and, you know. <laughs> okay, a minute ago. All right, so the quick, the quick wrap is, he's so polite, I love you. Uh, the quick summary is, what's next? Well, we're using WhatsApp to do pushes. We're testing that in, uh, in Tamil, in India right now. We're testing pushing the messages out on WhatsApp, and I'm loving the results. We're already seeing, because we have follow-ups as well, and some of the radio too, we have partners that are doing the follow-ups. But that's another one that you wanna pay attention to. And a, a third one is, a second one, I'm sorry, is uh, Campus Crusade, you know it as Life Agape in the uh, Europe and Asia markets. Well, we're working with them on their radio broadcast and they are doing the follow-ups and now we're getting those as well. And so the last one is in Helsinki. Uh, I think it's in September. There is a meeting for those who are gearing toward Muslims and uh, Muslim background believers to reach to them with technology and those who have the content. So we will be participating in that as well. So. Uh, Again, just invite your questions, and I'm sorry I took two minutes extra. Next, I'm going to invite uh, Gary Hill, who's here from uh, the Discovery Bible, to come up and share a little of what they're doing in technology-based delivery for pastoral training. <laughs> when I was 26 years old, 40 years ago, 
I got into a cooperative with Trinity Evangelical Divinity School Seminary in uh, Deerfield, Illinois. And I asked the seminary folk to join me in developing interactive software. It was ahead of its time then. And that we would spend decades, if necessary, and it did, it took us four. If we could get Hebrew and Greek, people studied directly from the Hebrew and Greek text without memorizing a single Greek or Hebrew word. That was the goal. So Moody jumped in, Moody Publishers. They made it a bestseller in 87 in print on the New Testament. It had a lot of endorsers and a lot of encouragements and things. But what I'm here to share today is that um, we need to feed the flock. And to some extent, we have to bypass translation, study from the source documents in a competent way, peel back layers of the original text, yet have it so direct, not simplistic, but with simplicity, that people could do this. So we've hired the very best programmers. And end-to-end -end solution, from our servers down to you, um, we're giving, well, numbers, I guess, are not important right now, but we can give a lot of product on a, a, a lightning-fast, two-panel interactive software not pushing it, not even selling it. But if you would like it, if you come see us over at the discovery booth, um, we have the ability to be able to push this along. I know some folks from India were doing eight or nine meetings in India this month. And so you let us know how we can help. It's Discovery Bible. It's Hebrew and Greek studied from the original text. By clicking on an English text with a interactive panel kind of study, Never memorize a Greek or Hebrew alphabet or a single word. And you get thousands of devotional word studies, two lexicon, and all that kind of stuff. And I know quite how to say it, except those who can't get to seminary, I think we can save them $10,000 in one day. I, I hope that's a true statement. And um, come by and see us right in the main hall. We'd love to help, and we're, we're giving the product away. So let us know how we can do that. Thank you. I think that was three minutes, so uh, congratulations on that. Uh, lastly, Andrew Lamb is here. He's with uh, Third Millennium uh, Ministries, and he's going to come share and give you an update. Uh, when he's done, we're going to be breaking up into those groups so that you can start to address that question, but I'll let you know what that question is again. Andrew, come and share your ministry. Thanks for having me here, Andrew Lamb. Third Mill, we do two-year Bible and theology classes for free. All of our professors are PhD level professors and we do this on every technological platform. We use Mega Voice. We, you can do our work um, audio only. You can do our work paper only. You can do it on satellite TV. We have USB drives. We do it on tablets. We do it on microchips that will go in your phone. You can do it with an app. You can do it with a projector that doesn't need a computer. And these are all different ways of doing two years worth of Bible and theology with technology. Um, as we seek to do this, it is coming and saying, we're not trying to do everything. We're not trying to do what the Bible folks are doing with the Greek and Hebrew. Because you can go to them and they will show you the Greek and Hebrew. Ours are different groups, different Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, all sorts of types, teaching online in 22 different languages, and we're doing more in the future. Um, and so come see me at the third millennium booth in the back corner, or you can look us up and download everything for online for free. Third mill, T-H-I-R-D-M-I-L-L dot org. You can download all the material. You can also work online. There's an online classroom called Moodle that you can work through and take the quizzes and tests and do all of that. We work with schools to provide them curriculum. We work with churches to help them do informal training. We work with individuals and small groups to do informal training in that way. So it is at a level that can be done academically up to a master's of biblical studies. And we also have high school students that are doing it. 
So depending on how hard you want to make it, we can adjust that. You can do it without, with just a certificate of completion, or you can do it all the way up to the master's level and getting U.S. credit. Now, if you want to do that, that costs money. If you want to do the certificate and learn, we can do that for free. So um, if you're interested, the projectors that we have are done through a partner. They don't need a computer. Um, they just use the USB stick. The tablets are done through partners. Um, and we, we um, see a lot of people liking these because you can watch it, you can listen to it, you can read it, and you can do your quizzes and tests on the tablets, and that's fairly inexpensive. The app on the phone, we will this, this next year we will have it where you can do the quizzes and tests with a text messaging rather than having to use data package. So you'll be able to get a micro SD card, take your classes, do your quizzes, meet with a small group and discussion, and what we call integration in life and ministry. We're really committed to that. So come by our booth. We have flyers that explain about it. And we can give you a list of all the classes that are available right now in different languages. Um, if you would like to help us, we'd like to get into more languages. We're glad to do that. We do have Mandarin come by. I've got a stick for you with two years' worth of Mandarin classes on it. Uh, Arabic we have. Bahasa we have. Um, Swahili, French. We've got a, a lots of different things. Um, we also are working with other groups. One of the groups we work with is a ministry called 100-fold, and they actually have come up with a microcomputer that you can set in a room and everybody in the room can connect to it and download material. Our material is um, video-based, but it doesn't have to be. It's very uh, graphics-oriented, so it's not talking head. You're not, it's not boring. We're trying to make it uh, what we call edu education, but edutainment. So it's education and entertainment together. If you want to see it, come by our booth. I'm, I'm projecting it up on the wall, and you can check it out. Um, so a two-year Bible and theology for free. I also want to mention at our booth, we have a partner named Lystra. And Lystra is doing an online sermon outline study Bible. And they're like our partners with the Open Bible, that they are doing a study Bible, a library that they will give you for free. We went to them and said, we're giving the classes for free. You give library for free. So you can come by, and they are downloading and giving for free anybody that's a trainer this, complete, this huge library. So come see us for training materials to your classes, if you're a school, if you're a church, if you want to have a study group, uh, if you're a house church, we, we want to resource you. Our goal is to resource the under-resourced pastor for free in biblical education. That's what we do. Thank you. And I have Arabic, Chinese, Mandarin, um, Spanish, um, Russian, I'm out of English, but if you want an English, come see me. We're actually changing some of the Russian ones to English. There are only two Russian speakers here this week, so I brought more Russian than I needed. But anyway, God bless. Thank you, Andrew. All right, here's our question. You've heard us. We're halfway through the session, and you've heard us talking enough. It's time for you to talk with each other. So if you're not near somebody... Um, we're not going to be talking with imaginary friends today, so move near somebody and talk of one, of one of two things. Our question is this, what obstacles in pastoral training can technology-based delivery overcome? Your positive answer might be, here's the things I'm using that have overcome some of those challenges. Share that with each other, and if you want, share it on a piece of paper. I don't know how we're submitting questions, but somehow submit that up front so at the end, we can share it with everybody else. Maybe you're going to focus on the negative. Maybe you're going to focus on the obstacle. Here's the obstacle I still face in pastoral training. What solution might be out there for that? All right? So I'm going to step away from the microphone. You're going to move around and talk with each other. Write down either positive things that have overcome or negative obstacles that you still have. And we'll give about uh, 10, 15 minutes left in the time. I'll come up, collect all those, and we'll start going through it and asking questions and responses to it. Break up and talk with each other. 
I don't know if in the Congress you have noticed any, uh, we are unified in the body of Christ, but if you've noticed any kind of divide, if you walk into the banquet hall, you can almost look and say, this continent seems to sit and eat over here, and that continent seems to sit over there. These are the rule keepers over here because they were all broken up from their groups and ready to go right on time. These are the freewheelers over on this side. They're still all in group. They're still all talking. You know, time just doesn't quite uh, fit in all those things. So, yeah, is it, uh, this, but it's interesting that you broke out just that way, this side and that side. <laughs> India stretchable time. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I've gotten uh, papers here and everything, and, and I'll read through them, but if there is something just burning on your heart, uh, rather than me just reading that something that's here or that, if there's something you say, boy, this is the great blessing that, that I never knew I, I needed, and technology met that need, and uh, it could be a blessing to somebody else, you know, just... Pop up your hand, raise your voice uh, so the rest uh, of us can hear it. Or if you say, boy, there's just a need. I have done all I can to try and figure an answer, and I just haven't been able to find the answer. God's brought everybody here together for a reason, and i got to believe that not in this room, somewhere in this Congress, is the answer to the obstacle that you're facing. And so before I read, I'll skip these if necessary, is there something just... You're saying, boy, this is burning in my soul. I, I got to share this. Let me share one thing. I just, we talked about the importance of integration on the ground. And, you know, we have a brother that's doing it in Kenya. Other people can do the technology, and that's a value. But if you're here and you're doing it on the ground, I want you to know how important that is. That integration, that, that working with people, the technology can do a certain amount. But if you're here and you're a pastor or a leader and you're training other people in your context, that's of so much value and so appreciated. I, I see a hand back there. I, I, I tell you what, are, are they recording? I shouldn't ask this on the recording, but are they recording this session? <laughs> if you shouldn't be on tape, please hold something in front of your face. Uh, and uh, go ahead and raise your voice. Um, Pastor Elizabeth Kasaija from Uganda, in the town called Hoima, about 130 miles away from the main city. Um, one person who I've been dealing with, rural pastors and rural pastors' wives. I just want to talk on, pa on, this, on the side of pastors' wives. Uh, as our, uh, when, when we came here, we talked more about pastors' wives. And what I, I saw was, to help the pastors is, is to equip the pastor's wives. Because if most of us have got full-time pastors already in the ministry, we have got a, a challenge of telling them that even when you're in the full-time ministry, you still can work because of, because of the needs that are in the families. Mm. So what I did was to collect the pastor's wives, and I tell them, guys, we have to work. If our husbands are busy, you know, in the church and, you know, they are, let's do something for our families and for our children. So we started, you know, we started different, different, you know, doing different businesses with our hands. Like I do soap, I make liquid soap and I make it from home, locally with, you know, with sticks in the what, in the, so I called other pastor's wives. I told them, guys, let's learn. Because I also learned it from somewhere. Then I tell them, come, let's learn. So we learned how to make liquid soap. And we pack it in jerry cans or in cans. And, you know, we sell them. Mm. Our challenge is now the market. Then later we said, okay, fine. There are those who say, I'm from the village. I cannot, I cannot access the, the products of making liquid soap. We said, can we make beads? you know, necklaces, handbags out of the local materials. We started that training. And some of them are now, uh, you know, have learned how to make the local materials, making beads. And now they can, they can now locally sell some of them. 
the problem is still the marketing because sometimes they produce in big numbers and they don't have the market. And they come back and say, Mama, what do we do now? We have all this and I'm sometimes stuck. Then thirdly, we said, we must have plan B. Every pastor's wife, plan B for your home. If you're a farmer and you go farming, that is your plan A. You have done it from the time you got married up to now. Now we want to introduce plan B. Why? Because sometimes they, they do the farming and the products fail in the garden and the season fail. Now what happens? They are, they are stuck. We said now if you are farming, then have local chicken around you. At least you can rear chicken, you can rear you know, some other birds. So that if the, if the farm does not work, come out well for you, then you sell this chicken and they will help you buy books, buy some, some things for your children. So this year, our, 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 our theme for this year is every pastor's wife, plan B for your home. And that's what we are running with. And not only pastor's wife, but every woman in the home, plan B. Whether you're working in the bank, plan B. Why? Because one day the bank job will end. What will you turn to? Plan B at home. And that's what we are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? We got a couple minutes here. Uh, if something's put on your heart, I'm going to try and summarize what all the groups have, have talked about and what you're facing. All right. Oh, yes. Wait, here comes a microphone. I am from Chad. Oh. Chad is uh, in Africa. And I'm going to be short, but not like my sister. I have uh, just a need. I come from a landlocked country, mm -hmm. and uh, my, my, my country have a lot of sun. And we are in need of uh, material, of technology in uh, solar, or in power solar. Okay. So how can someone help us? And uh, to power devices, to power uh, things for your house, to, uh, to provide power for what? Let me explain. Mm -hmm. As you talk about technology, yeah. you, you mention things we can have it through internet. But right. in my country, the government do not allow us yeah. most of the time to have a regular uh, yeah. online. Right. So we are locked, and sometimes we do not have uh, yeah. things to have uh, the technology of the liver. So we need things right. like uh, material w which we can use it through power solar. Okay. Yes. Okay. And we are ne in need of it. So how can we help, get help with that need? Uh, there are several. Uh, I hear somebody wanted to applaud for your question, so go ahead and do that. It's a question. So. Yeah. Uh, I think part of the beauty is uh, you've had four different individuals up here talking about different ministries. And uh, we overlap in some areas, but we also fit very different, unique areas. Uh, the Discovery Bible is probably going to be, I'm going to put them at the far end of where all of us are. Uh, if you're working in Hebrew and Greek and all of that, that's probably a little farther down. And French, yeah, French. Um, yeah, yeah, the technology, that's what I'm going to say. But each of the, like the three of us, we each have something in solar that would provide training. Uh, and I know there are also, uh, none of us are doing these kinds of things, but there are solar kinds of devices that would also help, you haven't necessarily asked about this, that would help in, in life, not just in training. Uh, you know, I mean, and I know people that do water filtration kind of systems. And I mean, there's technology in those things. What I'd encourage you in is whatever your obstacle is, uh, hear one of two things. Uh, one, don't stop searching till you find the ministry that has the answer, because I'm almost going to guarantee somebody out there has the answer for you. 
It might not be one of the four of us. We might not have what you need. There's going to be somebody at this Congress that needs a language in a solar source that none of us have translated. But there's going to be somebody else out there. Or somebody who's already doing it needs to know of that need, and we just don't know. And so one of the things I'd encourage you is, each of us who is here, and, and I know their heart, we've only known each other a couple days and over a couple hours here, but they wouldn't be here if this wasn't their heart, and any of the exhibitors here. If you find something that they're doing that comes close to meeting your need, but doesn't quite meet your need, tell them, I need this. And this is, this is one of the great beauties of a Congress like this is you, you network back and forth to each other of, oh, I don't have this, but I know somebody that does. Soap making. Uh, when I, next time I go to Haiti and they're talking to me that in the churches there, they're struggling in finances and they need some way, I'm going to look and say, I know a lady <laughs> making soap and selling it and, and providing for her family in that way. And, and I know some of you are on the higher end of technology and you think soap making is not technology, but understand for some of our brothers and sisters in Christ, it is. It's the cutting edge of technology for them. Yeah, okay, uh, come on up. Just very quickly, I will give you the information. I've written it down, but for the rest, uh, as he mentioned, there are those that make the audio players, and it's a solar device, and they're very good. They're very rugged. The one I mentioned earlier is from South Africa. They can ship into your country, and they are called DavarPartners.org. Davar Partners. I wrote it down. I'll give it to you. For the rest, just for your information, too, we are now partnered with a, a ministry out of Chicago, the United States. It is called Watts of Love. Watts meaning W-A-T-T-S, like, you know, power, the watts. It is a solar device. It is a light. It is a radio. And it also has a USB plug to be able to put in anybody's teachings. So this is another very strong ministry where there is no power. And think of in your culture, too, where you have no ability to read at night. Well, they can. These last a long time on one little charge from solar power. So what can you do now? You can cook, you can read, you can teach your children, you can do so many things at night that you couldn't do otherwise. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah, yes? Thank you. My name is Steven Hibu, and I'm from Uganda, Africa. Uh, just a small, I don't know whether clarity or uh, about the audio Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it is not here in my local language, but uh, we had, I had an opportunity to hear one in my local language, and uh, even as I speak that language, I couldn't recommend, uh, recommend that version. That translation wasn't really uh, the right one. Uh, it was an uh, old version, and they also yeah. used uh, a, a one of the religion yeah. around. Of course, it is a Christian, but then uh, we live, Uganda is an 85% Christian country. Yes. And so I don't know how, what is the criteria of you selecting, of maybe the organization that deals with this. What are their criteria of getting maybe somebody to come and help? you know, translate and in a, probably in a language that would be clear enough because we have proverbs, idioms also in our language. Unfortunately, the person who, uh, that, uh, you know, translated that, it's really out. And also even the Bible, the Luo version, uh, there are so many um, uh, missing scriptures and also the language has been completely opposite. Like, uh, for example, Psalms 116 verse 15 that says, precious in the sight of the Lord the death of his end, right? But in our language, it's the opposite. Thank you. Be because we work in so many different languages, I'll address that a little bit. First of all, we try, and many of the ministries are trying to figure out what is the middle ground. So if you're in English, you could be Southern United States, 
or, or like Texas or something, or from England, and we try to figure out what's the middle ground. That's very hard to do. What I would encourage you to do is be very brutal. Tell us the truth, because we can't fix it if we don't know. Um, so that's number one. Number two is pray for those that are translating. We just had a translator that we found out all he was doing was doing it on, on Google Translate. He was not doing the work. He was taking the money that we had raised to help him, and he was just giving us garbage. So that's sad, but we are constantly checking, you know, does this do it? We also are always looking for groups within a language to check it. So like our sister that wants French, we have a French team that's checking it. That's the reason it's going so slow, is that they check everything so much. Um, so communicate back, help us, pray for translators that they do a good job. And if you want to be on a translation group that helps check, we are always looking for that, and we appreciate that. And then there are people that want to help. I've talked to lots of people here. Someone, brother from Bangladesh, came and said to me, how come you're not in our language? And I said, help us. Um, and so we need help to do that. Um, for our organization, we give a, the manuscript. We give a, uh, a glossary of all the terms, and then you can work it into a translation team. Um, and so we're, we're glad to be a part of that. Oh, uh, wait, wait, before, yeah. we, before we get to the next question. It's not a question I wanted to okay. uh, maybe to comment on this. I'm Changasha Jonathan from Uganda. And I'm in both formal and non-formal training. I want to agree with the, my brother from uh, Uganda. Um, the translation, the, I'm a member of the Bible Society of Uganda. I sat with the bishops and we sat the way we meet. But I read through the Rutoro, Runyoro Rutoro, where this comes from, translation. I've learned Rutoro, I've spent 30 years in Rutoro. I saw a lot of mistakes in the new translation of the Rutoro Bible. Then when I went deep to ask, I, the only answer they gave me was that, the, you know, Protestant, we believe uh, the 66 books of the Bible, but the Roman Catholics have the Deuterog other books. Now, the influence that the Church of Uganda has is the, the Roman Catholicism that has taken root in the translation of the new Bible. Mm. Reason being, you see, our people in local areas, they don't know even how to read, how to ask. They just take anything you tell them. And that's why I took a note to study Hebrew and Greek somehow to check with the translation, but I have seen and made a lot of mistakes in the new Rotoro, basically translation, and the Ruchiga, my language. Now the question is, uh, how can we help ourselves? Because we have a very big influence of Roman Catholicism in uh, our, our country, and they are targeting the local people, local pastors and Christians who are the majority. So. I, as, as my brother said, how can you really help or guide about how to go, to go about this issue? Because it is creeping in the Protestant church. Even the words are, that are written there, the pronunciation are Catholics. Even the, the, the punctuations, the, 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 the syntax, the, the statements, the way they are made. And if you check, I use, to, to test them, I, I use the Bible works. And it has helped me help my congregations and our pastors when we are teaching them formally. And informal, of course, but it is a challenge we have. So as we think of electronic way of getting materials, we have to help this area. Thank you. Just may I also comment, I appreciate what Brother Andrew has said. We don't always get it right. And we want to be the first ones to fix it. So 
please, don't worry about this cultural thing where you're going to hurt our feelings, okay? You're not going to hurt our feelings. We want it to be right. You know, God's word is worthy of being the best quality it can ever be. With that said, we also, as Andrew has said, make sure that we vet the people who are doing the work first. We typically use our partners through which we find the translators, not those who we don't trust and don't have any understanding about. The third thing is to back translate. That's a fancy way of saying what we sent out in an English script, what did it come back as in the final product and have it back translated to see if what we send out is the same. Third point, make it culturally relevant. Our examples of the United States Navy doesn't mean anything in uh, Ghana, you know? So we want it to be your culture, right, anywhere. So the point is, we appreciate that. We now have, uh, we've only been doing this for 30 years, you know, so we're still the infants. So we have to figure that we, we needed to make changes. So right now, our Spanish, one of the first lessons or first less, uh, languages that we did is now being redone totally. We're doing a total revamp of Russian. We're doing a total revamp of Ukrainian. So we will change, just help us learn. Thank you. All right. We, we have, I, I, I'd love to tell you, we have two and a half minutes, and I'm supposed to be done with this, and you're supposed to go to a break, and I'm going to try and be a man of my word, and so uh, talk to me later. I assume through the GoPro Connects that there is a group or whatever that's created with this. I will take the notes that were here, and I will put it in as a posting in that group so that we can share it that way, Okay. Uh, last thing I'll say, and it's to piggyback off, and now I can't remember well, which of you said it, but I'll give Andrew the credit at this point. Um, to those of you without technology, uh, would you pray for those of us who have technology? <laughs> um, no, I, here's, here's the serious request. In the body of Christ, I recognize there is a stress that comes to those who do not have but there's also a stress that comes to those who do have and see all the need and have to try and figure a way to meet that need and where do you prioritize was the question in that. And so we need each other. We just, the body of Christ was intended to be a body and we need each other in this. So would you pray that there is wisdom and cooperation among those who have so that we don't end up with six copies of one new thing in one language and no copies in five languages and we have it all developed for the web and we got nothing for those without electricity and that, that pray for those who have that there would be wisdom and cooperation in, in what they do so that we can be the other side of blessing to those who do not yet have but, and I, I'm going to close with this. i got 10 seconds left. Um, the message you, that started with Andrew, again, uh, is if you have no technology, uh, you can still make disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh, I understand you are without, but I also understand with what you have, and you have the Holy Spirit, and you have God with you, and we will work, those who have will work tirelessly to get you what you need beyond that, but you have what you need. Uh, don't give up on what you do have. And i got to close it with that because it says 3 o'clock on my watch, and you need to take a break. If you want to come talk to any of us, come talk to us personally. But to everybody else, God they didn't tell me how to end this. God bless you. Amen. It's, 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 bing, bing. There we go. Thank <laughs> you.